Hello, everybody. Here is a mass-loaded transmission line for high QTS, high motor force subwoofers. It's the same size as a ported box I just uh, put out. So if you have, say, a less expensive sub, you've got like a SCAR SDR or something, don't put that in here. That won't be good in here. That won't be good in here. Uh, this would be better with a SCAR DDX. So let's get horn rasp open right here so I can show you how I simulate this and um, how you can simulate it. So basically, you're going to want to import the horn rasp record, which is uh, dual 15 mass loaded. That text. Import that, and it's... We'll fill in everything here and then paste the driver from database that you want to use. So if we put in a uh, SCAR SDR 12 D2 and then we go to loudspeaker wizard or we could calculate it too, but we're just going to go to loudspeaker wizard and we look at it. Uh, it's not, it's not great. It's loud. It would still be loud, but it wouldn't be great, but this isn't made for a 12 inch subwoofer. So Let's put in the 15-inch subwoofer that I modeled this around, which is the DDX-15D2. Loudspeaker wizard again. Uh, turn lossy LE on. That's probably more accurate to the real world. Um, so anyway, that baseline where you've got this, this hump right here at the tuning frequency, that probably won't happen in the real world. It'll probably be more like this and even as I say it'll probably be more like this it might actually end up being a little bit less output down here at the tuning frequency and then a bit of a rising response um, one of the reasons I've been choosing loudspeaker wizard here instead of just calculating it is because I want to show you something that's if we go to filling here which is if we stuff things like polyfill specifically it will tell you a certain amount of polyfill that you're putting in the box um, we can change how the output is mostly concerning ourselves with the roll off at the top because nobody wants to listen to 120 hertz, a huge spike, and then a giant null right after. So if we go look at the schematic where we're going to want to put our filling is anywhere in like this, this general section, I think is where it was. So if we put filling, see that's right there or right there we just put a tiny bit of filling in so you're gonna freak so that's 0 0.046 kilograms that's barely any you're gonna freak out look at how much better that roll off is look at that look at that it's way less of a gigantic spike if we keep putting that in it um it makes it marginally better the more we put in if we put a ton in then we lose all of our low end which is the trade-off with doing uh, polyfill is you, you do lose output a little bit. Um, and then if you look, this is segment one. So this is right behind the driver. That, yes, it flattens it out, but it makes it a lot less loud uh, per a given amount of polyfill, you know, just a little bit. See this? If we go 50 here, that's more than we were using before. Uh, we're losing output, and we're not really fixing the problem. So I wouldn't recommend putting it there unless you want to for some reason. I don't care. And then if we put it at the the mouth section, which is down here, that's changing this one, that gets rid of a lot of output while still not fixing the problem that much. So I think it would be best if you put it, put the fill in this general area, somewhere in here, right, where these braces are. Um so anyway, that's all good. That's all good. Here's the model. You can open this up in FreeCAD. Uh, the files will be there for you to open this up, and you can look at it. So if you're ever confused, you can come in here, and you can measure certain things. But uh, be aware that when you measure in this program by default, it's not going to give you 16.625, which is what it actually is. It's going to give you like 16.63. You have to go change that in the preferences so it shows you uh, more decimal places after 
or in your measurements. Here's the title page. It's tuned. Oop. Oh, okay. There we go. Close enough. It's tuned at 33 hertz for epic, wicked, sick, nasty, low bass that jiggles your uh, breasts. No matter how huge and manly they are or small and feminine or whatever you got, it'll jiggle it. Then we got a dual 15-inch mass-loaded subwoofer enclosure for high motor force, low QTS subwoofer. Uh, simulate your subwoofer first. We're simulating one side at a time when we do that. So just put in one subwoofer. If you put in two, it's going to look all sorts of wrong. Uh, the dimensions are 42-inch width, 20-inch height, and 22-inch depth. Uh, it's got a double baffle. I don't model two baffles anymore. I just kind of find it a waste of time. Um, it's a double baffle, three-quarter inch walls, and a braced resonator. Here's all the parts. I uh, I refuse to use two pages here. So it's it's a little bit cluttered, especially the baffle. <laughs> Look how many dimensions are on <coughs> on there. Sorry about coughing into the microphone, but... Uh, study this, make sure you know what you're doing and it, it all makes sense. Um, and then here's the helper page. Same thing with this is you're going to have to really study it. Make sure that little arrows are going right where you think they are. And this, this page right here is, uh, what I would use to like, what I would do is I would draw out a floor pan on the, on the base, on the big bottom board. I would draw that out and start placing probably these port pieces that are at the mouth in and then maybe these pieces back here and getting the braces glued to them uh, and kind of building it from the center out. I think that's how I do it. And uh, right here it says the braces need to be 8 and 7 eighths inch from the top or bottom and then they're in the middle. So that's the entire thing. That's That's it. That's it. There you go. If you want to use it, go ahead and use it. Yep. If you want to use it, go ahead and use it. Build it. It should work well. Once you put it in your cabin, it's uh, no longer ha going to have much relevance to what exactly this says here. This is um, in this horn rasp. It's 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 being simulated right now as a flat open field. If we take the environment when you make it different eh, mostly gives us more gain but you know a, a car cabin is it's going to change the um the output quite a lot you're going to get gain and cancellation different places i would low pass this at 100 or maybe 80 80 to 100 somewhere in there i'd low pass it and i'd high pass it at 33 here's the phase um, I'll save it and get it on the big screen here. All right, so there's the power again. Acoustical impedance. You know, that might not be good. I guess it's a lot or something. Uh, who cares? It's going in a car. It'll be fine. Electrical impedance. This just gives us the, uh, the tuning, basically. And then we see there's impedance down here where the speaker is uncontrolled and flopping around. Um, and then there's impedance at like 49 hertz where the system is very, very efficient. Diaphragm displacement. Um, of course, we've got none at 33 hertz, very little, because that's a tuning frequency. When you put polyfill in, the speaker will move more at the tuning frequency. And then we got a lot out here at 48, 49 hertz. That's why we've got that impedance rise. Uh, here's the phase. The phase is wicked good up until about 122 hertz. That's cool. Uh, group delay. Group delay, eh, it's getting to be a bit. 28 milliseconds at uh, 30 hertz. 23 at 35. It'd be all right. It'd be all right. So there you go. Decide if you want to use it or don't use it. Do whatever you want. Have fun.